It takes generally a moment. And. Yes, that looks. We're there. Something's okay. happening. We're back on. There. Good. Hello. Okay. Yes! Yeah, yeah, we can rely. Yeah, do what you gotta do. didn't do. How silly of me. Sorry about that, chat. Technical difficulties. Yeah, it's never happened before. <laughs> Something new. Not even once. Not even once, just on the finale. I would say that I bring them over from Join the Anarchy, but I haven't played Join the Anarchy in quite some time, so... You've been stalking them up. <laughs> yeah. Everybody but us is straight. Are we straight? We're straight? We're okay, good. good. Okay. Um, so you read through. There's a thing about the barbarians. There is a lot of military information, but that's all that seems to be there. And the dagger, the stiletto. And, and, and the dagger, the stiletto, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. yeah, Thomas Thomas will bring up uh he'll look at Reese and he goes, Do you know anything about the an uh, dwarven axe that speaks to ancestors? He shakes his head no. We found one in here. Uh I checked over it and that was the enchantment it had on it. I asked one of the ancestors what happened here. I saw a vision of your father and Zoligar? Zeligar? Zeligar. I was close. I didn't want to call him Zoltar again. <laughs> um, and and Ze, 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 you just said it. Zeligar. Zeligar. I keep wanting to say Zeligan. Zeligar. And your father and Zeligar uh, talking with his troops about the barbarians were coming to shore, that they were here. Not here in this fortress, but somewhere on the island. He will, uh, he's absent in his stare as he's, he's like looking around. Um, he definitely doesn't seem to have a good understanding where to come next or what to say next or was how to even this, respond to what you've said. Was this the only place that your father would have gone? <laughs> Does um, he have an, any other safe house or haven? Let's check Zeligar's room. This way. So he goes back out into the throne room. But the door over here behind the curtain. That's... We don't need to go there yet. Hopefully we won't need to go there at all. Do you not like going there? He gives you like this look and then he's like just starts <laughs> making his way back down. Is it your mother's room? It's uh, completely ignored. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes. He may be a very young person, but he's not an idiot or a pushover. All right. <laughs> he will go back into the throne room and behind one of the other Unless draperies. Push over, then I suppose. Then he's definitely, he's pushed, definitely over. pushed over. Behind one of the other draperies, he opens another secret door and enters into a room. What's the number? Five. Oh, I'm on the wrong one then. Mm -hmm. Meow. How can you The most noticeable features seen upon entering the very large and fairly detailed stone carving which runs most of the length of the north wall of the room, some 70 feet in overall length. Think about that for a minute. It's a 70 foot long stone carving on one wall. That's a really <laughs> long carving. Now I'm going to describe to you. The wall carving depicts a mighty wizard, obviously Zeligar, on a hilltop casting spells in the air over a valley below with an entire army fleeing in confused panic. This man has a wall yeah. Of him, a massive statue. Really, the thing is, I'm not surprised because Rogan fucking plastered his fucking shit all over the place, yeah. <laughs> and he and then here's Zola, Zoltar 
That's fucking. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, these are two very humble gentlemen that we're dealing with. The East and West mm. walls I, I are devoid, very devoid, discreet, devoid of detail. Although there are several wall pegs on each, apparently for hanging garments. Oh, there is the, this. That's edited. There is a cloak on one of the pegs. There is a minimum <gasps> of furniture within the room. Um, located on the southeast corner is a bed. Uh, or sorry. Um, okay. Located in the southeast corner of the chamber is a frame of ornately carved rosewood. The headboard beside showing the carving designed uh, to advantage boldly features Zelergar's name highlighted it in gold leaf. The bed obvious. Yes, his headboard has his name on it in gold leaf. <laughs> the bed obvious has value to it. And note, the gold leaf is still there, so people have not found yeah. this room. It's very fine workmanship. A rose wood nightstand table is beside the bed and has a drawer on it. Elsewhere in the room, there's a table with three chairs. Upon the table is a pewter pitcher with three pewter mugs. There is a passageway leading out of this room. Let's see what you can see in there. And what you can see is benches, tables, and glassware from here. He goes I would into- like- go, go ahead. I would like to check out the cloak. All right. Uh, Kodrung? Um, I'm gonna look around for another secret door. Okay. I love secrets. Oh man. Let's see, that's 6, 12, 17 on a 14. Okay. Huh? 17 on a 14. 17 on a 14. So there's, the answer is no. There's just there's just this. There's just a 70 foot bob relief mural of wizard <laughs> spraying wizard spells on everybody. And, and, an and another uh, an opening uh, that is a short hallway into another space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pay no attention behind the curtain. <laughs> Get over behind the curtain. Um, this cloak seems to be made of uh, seal skin. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Is it magical in any way? All right, you take a moment and then peer into it, and yes, it is. How magical? What Minorly exactly? Minorly so. Is it? By wrapping the cloak around you and pulling it over your head, it turns into a short purpose, water-breathing, swimming kind of magical enchantment. It helps you move around in water. Kind of fishy. <laughs> Seal skin cloak. I feel bad taking it because Reese is here, but I also want it, so. I'll put it with our stuff and then, you know, give an Aracia look, being like, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you people are terrible. All I mean, this stuff I've, actually belongs to him. Yeah. If he's alive. He didn't he also didn't parents, react right? when Kodrog whipped that out, so You're right, he didn't But he didn't kind of worried this, about it. But his... he didn't actually see him take it. He's like Well I don't wanna like take like, it in front of Reese. If he's okay, right there, I'm not gonna be worried do about it. things that haven't come yet. We'll get to them at some point when Yep. Alright. Um uh, he immediately moves over to the, the nightstand and begins messing around, uh, pulling out pieces of paper and forcing the drawer, trying to get the drawer to pop open. Um, as you're playing around with the cloak and staring at it, you see him pulling on the drawer and he can't get it to open. And every time he pulls on it, a magical spell tries to attempt to activate. Can I check while, since I'm looking at the cloak, does, can I see what spell that is? Yeah, it's a fireball. He's, yeah, he's drag, <laughs> grabbing the drawer and he's tugging on it really hard. Why won't it open? Yeah, Thomas like kind of moves in and <laughs> kind of not on accident grabs Reese by the waist and kind of lifts him up and moves him and he goes, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <And> he just. <laughs> I think Reese and him are about the same size. Oh, I thought Thomas Could... was a relatively small human. No, Thomas Tom... is in heels for a while. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. All right, so you pull him back. <laughs> Uh, he's like, Besides, he's what, 15? And Thomas, Thomas is what, in his late 20s, early 30s? That Fair enough. Doesn't I'm, change much about I'm gonna, height, I'm, but. I mean, I, I'm just going to say that it happens because, you know, we really don't want this kid yeah. setting off a fireball. No, we don't. Um, yeah. Do we? No, we he don't. says, but Zeligar might have put something important in there. 
I understand that, but you don't, you can't see a, I'm a wizard. You I can't know. see what I can see. There's something attached to this drawer. It's, it was going to set off a trap if you kept holding on it. We would all be set off in flames. Oh. I will open it. <laughs> he, he turns back to it and I would like to dispel this thing. All right, Arcana. Thing. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, da -da -da. Nine out of 18. All right, not a problem. It's still locked though. Yeah, then after after he's like, all right, spell's gone, Kodrog. Do you have your lock picking kit or a crowbar? Oh yeah, I've got a crowbar. Sweet. All right. Um, athletics. All right. That's gonna go great. Oh man, a six on a six. All right. Nice. Um, you get it open. Inside there is a book and uh, a ring with some keys on it. Total of two. A brass ring and an iron ring. I look over them magically. No, nothing's magical. Oh, they're just fancy. Just keys. And a book, you, and, 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 and a book you said? A book. Yeah. A small book. Is it, is it like a book book or is it like a leather journal? Mm, you can't tell until you open it. I mean, is, <laughs> is, is, is it, like it magical? No, it's not magical. <laughs> All right, I will open it. <laughs> All right. It's uh. It's love stories. <laughs> Thomas just goes, oh, he's like me. <laughs> like, like... <laughs> and Reese is probably going to pick up the keys. Yeah, Reese picks up the keys at this point. Are the keys any, like, fancy as I see him pick them up? No, they're like a brass skeleton key and an iron uh, key. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe... There's something in Zelligar's workroom. I don't think Zelligar would let him easily just walk around the workroom. The workroom is dangerous. Of course it is. It's That's why he, like, he would go up to the door. Yeah, he's going to walk up to the door and, like, <laughs> and then just. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, we obviously see him hesitate. Yeah, he, oh, like, yeah, yeah, he, he hesitates. Yeah, he doesn't. You see, he fishes for a moment. He's He's got the uh, brass key in hand and he looks into the room. Like, oh like you, man. like you see him like lean in and then look, like down. Uh, Reese, would you like me to go first? Is it safe? He'll uh, walk over and kind of lean over and look over uh, Reese's shoulder and check it magically. What's the number? Um, it is eight. Uh, the facility is designed for a variety of purposes related to the study and practice of magic. There are several large wooden tables within the room, one of which is overturned on its side, as well as one central table made of stone. Did you that just hear that? That was a car turn? accident. Yeah. What was that? There was that? a screechy sound outside her window. Oh, okay. it sounded like someone I hit a this. dog. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go take... Do you have your phone? Take your phone with you. People drive really fast on the road outside, so... Yeah, I have um, a friend who yeah, constantly has car accidents around this house. There are several large wooden tables, a stone table in the center. Although it's cold black. Okay. The top of the prominent table is a slab of smooth black slate. Although it's cold black, beauty is hidden by a thick layer of dust. None of the tables have anything upon them. There are several chairs and stools. We just had one of those flickers again. We need to check, yeah. make sure we didn't lose the internets. You guys still there? Chat. You guys are still there. Yay. Great. Um, along the north wall on both sides of the door leading to the laboratory are wooden cabinets on the walls approximately four feet off the floor. Cabinets are not locked and they contain various chemical compounds and supplies and no particular blah, blah, blah. Okay. So basically there are three tables. One's overturned and there are shelves on the walls about four feet up with a bunch of stuff in them in here there is uh another door that leads out into another room 
So other than that, there isn't like runes in the floor or anything of that Nothing. nature. No. Nope. Yeah, Thomas just goes, "You're fine," and I'll pat him on the shoulder. He walks around the laboratory, this workplace, and he's like looking at everything, and uh, he's definitely not touching anything. Kojak. Um. Yeah, I don't like magic spaces scare me honestly. Uh, I'm gonna hang back just a little bit and wait until uh, they're both well into the room. Okay, they are well into the room. Uh, all right, I'll step in and start looking around okay. for secret stuff. Go ahead, roll. Oh man. Six, nine, eleven on fourteen. Ah, uh, there are no secret passages out of this room that you can see as you walk around. Uh, the only exit out of here leads into another room, which has several large wooden tables and a heavy stone table. Um. There's uh, some candles on the tabletops and some books and some other stuff. And I'll go into that description if you go into that room. But other than that, there are no exits out of this room. No secret exits out of this room. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to I'm gonna leave the magic stuff to Thomas and Reese. And I think I might go into that other room with the tables and the candles. Because candles are always valuable to keep around on the ship. Okie dokie. Thomas... What do you want to do yes. in this room or the next uh, room? Thomas is kind of like Googling at everything, like just kind of looking everything over and... In the shelves, you find containers of sand, water, sulfur, salt, different types of wood chips, herbs, vinegar, pickles, lots of pickled different foods, and some not foods like eyes, newts, metal filings, a variety of selections of things and alchemical devices and whatnot. You find a horn that's labeled Dragon Horn. You come across a bottle. It's a large bottle and it's empty, and it's but there's a, a wax seal on it. And then you come across the same shaped bottle, glass jar, I should say. It also has a wax, uh, sorry, not wax seal, lead seal, lead seal on both of them. Um, everything okay? Cool. Um, there's another jar, the same size, lead stopper, and inside of it, there is a clear liquid with a black cat on the inside of the jar. It is this magical? No, it's not magical at all. But there's a cat inside of it. That's right. A big old jar with a black cat inside. Does it look like a house cat? Yes. Is it alive? Uh, it's not moving. Uh, Thomas is just gonna not nah, he's gonna ignore that but uh, okay. I mean he looks around at all the other odds and ends and all the uh, components and just kind of uh, like is in awe like this is a it's workshop a that he wish he had here, yeah. yeah but he'll keep up with Reese Reese seems to know where he's going where are we going all right, we're in the workshop. He wandered in looking around for anything. He didn't see anything that caught his attention. And so Kodrog was heading into the lab, mm -hmm. and I was about to give the lab description. Okay, cool. All right, Kodrog. This is the wizard's lab. It is strange and fantastical place. Experimentations, many kinds of magic, and a collection of equipment and devices, which you're now seeing as you've stepped in through the door. It's not just tables with candles on it. There's a bunch of crazy oh. magical shit all over the place. <laughs> Dominating the room is a large human skeleton suspended from the ceiling and hanging in the northeast corner of the laboratory. And by large, we would describe it as probably like an ogre's skeleton or a giant Bigger, bigger than Gathlin's. Big in, bigger than a Gathlin's skeleton. Head big enough to turn into a helmet or a soup bowl. Well, I mean, you'd like a like a like a punch bowl, really. About the room are several <laughs> large wooden tables. A stone table. Uh, the tables are bare except for candles. Uh, one of them has a smoking uh, smoke 
sensor on it. Several pine logs are piled underneath one of the tables along the west wall is a large wooden rack, apparently from some kind of torture chamber. This is obviously sized for humanoid bodies. Trickles of dried blood stain the oaken construction on the front. On the south wall is stretched leather skin of something that might, you don't know what that skin comes from. Needless to say, there's stretched leather skin. Oh man, that's kind of humanoid shaped, you don't know. Maybe it's a cow, it's gotta be a cow, it's gotta be a cow. Yeah, um, Pig, pigs are humanoid shaped. Yes. Huh. So their skin is, the, the pigs are usually very close to humans. That's why we use them for forensic training. The skin is old and extremely fragile from what you look like. And as you're moving through the room with a bit of light coming from uh, Master Thomas, you can see that there are words been written onto the piece of leather. A sunken fire pit, blackened and cold, is noticeable in the center of the room. The pit's about two foot deep, also slightly less do several inches of ash. Iron bracing bars, suspending a cast iron pot over it. That's cool, whatever, moving on. Um, in the southwest corner of the room, there are two vats. Both are made of wood and both seem to be empty from here. A near third, a third vat, about half the size, is filled with water. A stone block used as a table or a stand is next to the vat. Maybe it's used to get up into them. God, you hope not. It's also a piece of glassware of various types on top of the stand, as well as on the floor and water barrels, uh, empty wooden coffin. Yes, a six foot wooden coffin with lid and everything and nothing's in the coffin. Oh man. And there's two kegs in the room on the north wall. I wonder what kind of brew that is. And yeah. next to the kegs are wooden crates. That's what you got. Okay. There um, is no other exit. Oh, wait, no, there is one exit from this room. Oh, wow. So there's there's two doors, the one I came through and then another one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, I'm not going that far. Um, <laughs> but there's light. Do you light. call us at all? Yeah. There's doors. There's more places. There's another place to go, and there seems to be light in there. Go drive. I'm just going to I'm gonna try and... Remember? I'm going to... No, I'm going to try and read the uh, words scrawled on the flesh leather. Number six? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's this one. Oh, no. Oh, no, never mind. No, there's no lights in that one. I was wrong. Uh, the words scrawled on the flesh leather. <laughs> the, the archers, like... Yeah, it's magical words. Okay. You recognize it as the stuff that's in Thomas's spell book. You want to read it? Uh, not out loud. <laughs> I don't want to try and sound it out and set anything off. That's not how magic works. Sometimes you don't even have to say the words for the magic to happen if you read the words. Oh, okay. Um. I mean, unless there's a semantic component, then <laughs> they would have to say it out loud. No, I guess. Well, he's I not magical, I... right? Yeah, I. Unless it's a, unless it's like a trigger word, you know, like Beetlejuice, then. <laughs> I don't but understand that's something to find magic. out. You wouldn't, you're not gonna know. <laughs> All right, I won't read too much of it. Once I realize it's magical stuff, I'll. You start sounding it out, and you're like, "Oh shit, I probably should so do you're, that." You're, you're <laughs> fighting your way through. No. You're fighting your way. Do you speak draconic? Read draconic. No. So you're fighting your way through the letters one at a time. At the first one, you don't. It says, "What strange." Things I, what's this big long? Oh, then you realize it's Z. Oh, that's Zell. Oh, it's his name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Study magic. I am great. You're starting to piece. And Thomas, as you, you're from the other room. It says, "What mysteries happened? Have I birthed here? I, Zelagar, the greatest of all wizards, delve deep into the arcane art. Blah blah blah. You get where this is going." <laughs> Skip to the end. Skip to the end. I'm awesome. Give me uh -huh. the TLDR. Yeah, dude. I'm Zelagar. Look at me. I'm Zelagar. I'm a wizard. Ugh. Wizards. I can stand on a hill and shoot magic from the high ground. <laughs> me, he has every right to be a, a dick about his magic, because his magic is fucking strong. I mean, if you believe the murals. Well, Thomas saw it. 
in the vision, uh, the description was he was like slinging spells like it was nobody's business. If you believe Thomas can't really people. do that. He has to concentrate. All right, Thomas. And all of the stone that makes up everything is magically shaped too. So yeah, this whole place has been magically shaped. Oh yeah. Just walk well, we're not with. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. We're room. not with Kodrog, are we? No, you're in the other room that has all the alchemical yeah. goods in it. Did you want to catch back up to Kodrog? Have a conversation with Reese about stuff. I kind of want to have a conversation to Reese. Okay. I, I want to see how he is doing first. Like, how how does he look? How is he doing? How's he holding up? Not great. Yeah, and not only can you see that on his face, you can see it on Narisha's face as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of emotions broiling around and he's trying to hold it together. Uh, Thomas will kind of clear his throat as he steps kind of closer to Reese because, um, are you sure that there's not another safe house where your father would go? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I thought that you tapped me because you were going to be talking. No, I'm, I am going to let you talk. Oh, didn't. That's what it's doing, it's yeah. tapping you. Oh. Go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you go. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of talking today. It's not even eight. We got ten minutes left, guys. Right? Come on. It's our... Yeah. Seven. yeah, he would know that that place That's exists, it. but probably has never been there. That's for this. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's true. I mean... <laughs> So you, uh, Reese has a very clouded and, and troubled look, like he's having a very, like, you know, like he's like having an internal argument, like about what yeah. you, you know, like there's there's you can see the gears are working and you can see the frown and you can see like the glassy um, eyes of the, filled with tear water. Tear water. Yeah. That hasn't quite, that hasn't started falling yeah. yet. So, if they're not here, and you see, like, like the whole, like his head falls down, his shoulders, so like, like the crest fall, yeah, and slow. like, you know. Like, oh well. Uh, come with me. And so Thomas he so, follow him. So he follows. So the, he goes back into the bedroom with the seventy-foot bob relief stonework, and he goes to the north wall, where it's the people, where the it's wizard, the people and the wizard. And you see, and you see, like there, it, he pushes in on the wizard's staff just a little bit, <laughs> and then the, and then the section of the wall, oh, you know, pushes back and rolls and, and rolls out of the way. <sighs> this way, and and you got and you guys meet up, and you can see Kodrog to your left is the door you opened earlier. Oh. From the other bedroom, but he turns to the right and makes his way to a uh, you know a door that he takes the yep the the, the, sorry, the brass one yeah and he just sticks and it into the air yeah into there's the no air. door there and can I check it magically as he does this. Yeah, yeah, it's a, you definitely see no door there. 
Um, because it's illusionary magic, you cannot detect illusionary magic through your detect magical ways. That's fair. And it, you know, sixes into nothing, turns it, and then pushes forward, and a door that wasn't there before swings forward, uh, and he walks into another bedroom. There's a large walnut bed against the west wall, rather ornately carved. It is larger than the beds you've seen than beforehand, where the beds beforehand could easily handle maybe two people. This one looks like at least four people could be in it. It's nice. It's a very large bed. It's an orgy um, bed. It has a large canopy of embroidered green cloth with a striking reddish trim. It is very dusty like everything else in the room. Next to the bed is a small table with a single drawer. Beside it, against the wall, is a chest of drawers made of red cedar, which, despite its age, still has its characteristic smell, which I don't know why you would even have that in the description when they just walked into the room. Yes, I'd like to sniff the bed, please. From here. (laughs) On the north wall, just- smells like cedar and dust in this room. (laughs) <laughs> On the north wall, just to the west of the secret door, is a large, full-length wall mirror in a wooden frame. The crown of the frame is carved into attractive, curving designs, and there is an inscription hewn into the finished wood that says, in Dwarvish, to the fairest of all in my eyes. So basically, the individual who owns this, when they stand before it, they would be seeing themselves a gift from someone. In the northwest corner of the room is an attractive water basin, which is sculpted from the same rock which forms the walls. Indeed, this protrusion is the integral part of the wall itself. The hole in the bottom of the basin is stopped with a cork. The crude drain lets water drop into an inclined piece of rock. This isn't important. Skip that. A small tapestry measuring about three by four feet. That's not small. Hangs on the east wall. It's all compared to everything else in here. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) It depicts a handsomely robust warrior carrying off a beautiful elven maiden in a rescue scene set in a burning village with a horde of ominous looking enemies viewing from afar. The enemies have shields of blue. Embroidered on the gold cloth at the top of the scene is the word. Did we want to go with that name? No. No, we need a better name. But why would we need to? Actually, we can just skip the name yeah, and use the rest exactly. of it. Embroidered at the top, it says, The most dearly won and greatest of all my treasures. Blech. The tapestry is within what? a wooden frame. <laughs> and is firmly anchored to the wall. And, th- and then of course the rest of the description is how the players can't get it off the wall because they're a bunch of... <laughs> they don't want right, us. Right, that's pilfering. this part right here. We just yeah, ad-lib right. that. Yeah. Do you want to ad-lib that part? No, you can do I'm it. I'm gonna ad- ad-lib it. Uh, beside the chest of drawers, there is a... There is a series of pegs on the wall with cloaks hanging on them. Three cloaks. Fourth peg is empty. All the cloaks are nice and gray, just like what you've seen in all the pictures of Zeligar. Next to it is a table, and sitting on top of it, on top of the table, are several of those wooden heads decorating, and by several I mean three, decorating one of the three heads is a gray, gray white haired wig a gray white haired mustache and beard. And there's an accoutrement oh. of other decorations and necessities for the purpose of. It's a vanity. A vanity dresser. There's but other devices on here as well for the purpose of, like, pinning a wig to you and stuff like that. Just- Is she Zilligar? <laughs> I told you that they were boning! <laughs> I called it! <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why she has fucking powerful ass magic. She has elven blood in her system. Yeah. Thomas isn't so. saying this out loud, but he he does give Kojark a look like I told you. <laughs> like <laughs> 
Can I tell? Can we tell if it's if it's if it's like that though? If it, <laughs> if I'm right, that these are meant for like dress up. Yeah, that's exactly what we got going on here. Yeah, this, this is, is like, a wig like, and a. Uh, it's prosthetics. Prosthetics. If you go yeah. over there and open the this, the, it's a full makeup vanity. Like there, <laughs> there's no joke. This is like when you. Know, you have not seen anything this advanced except for the most uh, renowned of theaters if you ever got invited backstage. And then you start realizing all the chemicals that you saw in the other room were to make this makeup. And you're oh, seeing a shit. lot of makeup. So in case you're magic, maybe if you did this and you put magic on you, you'd look the part. But what happens if your magic fails? You have yeah. to have a backup. Yeah, that's 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 holding a lot of mana per day. Yeah. Um, Thomas just kind of does this, oh, type of thing out loud, and then he gives Kodrag a look of I fucking knew it. <laughs> like <laughs> they were banging, and um, uh, <laughs> I also realized something else, but I'll save that for later. Uh, yeah, Thomas just kind of looks at Reese and makes sure he's all right and he knows what he's doing and what he's whatever looking he's through doing. the nightstand at this point in time and what he's going through right now seems to be journals hmm. Ooh, at this I time read. I'll, I'll help him with the journals this time yeah i was gonna say do you want to help him with the journals yeah. okay he hands you one in the last journal entry is in some of the most nicest handwriting you've ever seen this has to be a banker or something like, woo! As you begin reading through it, it's- It's money lender fancy. Money lender fancy, I like that terminology. You start reading through it and, oh shit, you can't read it. Uh -huh. yep, put that one down, pick up the next one. Oh, hey, this one's written in, um, oh man, this is written in some sort of human languages. It's not written in dwarven. You, you don't need human- Elvish? The first uh... one was. The second one's written in uh, Roagon's, you know, the Republic no. of Public uh, Porthian writing. My my two uh, reads are Dwarven and Takeo. Yeah, you got nothing. So you sit down to help him, you're like, <sighs> <laughs> I do not recognize these words. Well, Thomas will just say, take your time with that one, and he'll start tackling the Elvish journal. And surprisingly, though, as you. Uh, Kodrog are trying to make your way through it. It looks like Reese is able to read that one a little bit better than you are. As oh, you're fumbling with words, he's like, no, he's no, like, that means a, barrel. This, yeah. <laughs> so yes, he's, so it seems like he was tra like, yeah. he was, he was raised with a certain dialect. Not the, right, not the one that's most huh. common. Yeah. Well, I'll hand it off to the better reader. So the story comes that <laughs> there are no dates listed in here that you can associate with. In the Elven Journal, she writes about dates which seem to associate with a calendar that you know exists but have never laid your hands on before. Okay. So she must be keeping track through her ancestral knowledge. Through his journal, you find out that they knew they actively worked against the barbarians. And the barbarians is a terrible word. Basically, it means the locals who didn't want people moving in. They were, oh. you know, taking territory and stuff like that. And then the locals would attack back and do terrible things to them. And they just wanted to live kind of in peace and run their mercenary unit. And it didn't work out that way. And so they made enemies and things piled up pretty quickly. And like the last journal talk about how the barbarians came and in dad's journal, his father's journal, it speaks about how the barbarians are coming. I just need to kind of to cover this stuff. We're going to take these flanks, do that. And if we succeed, we're going to push back and take them back to the Isle of uh, insert name and hopefully be able to take it from there. Through her journal, uh, you want to? Ad lib, jump uh, in here. No, you don't. Have, you have no idea. Okay. Yeah, we didn't talk about this, so I don't. Fair enough. Yeah. It's all in my head now. Yep. Through her journal, you learn that uh, other than she's probably about seven hundred plus years old. You... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for hosting. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than being about seven hundred years old, uh, she has 
uh, realize that the barbarians are amassing an army and it's wise that they push forward and that if things don't go well, she's going to get her guard, her honored guard, to make sure that her son gets put into the impenetrable protective cell she built so that she can come back to him. It will keep him young and alive for years on end, as long as no one, as long as it doesn't become damaged from something. So she can come back to him. What if she died? Which, well, I mean, let's be honest, that probably happened. Sounds but, like it did, yeah. Um, yeah, Thomas will kind of point that out and read it aloud to Reese. And he goes, well, that explains why you were locked up. He gives Told you you were being protected. But we have no way of knowing for how long. No, we don't. Kojar, do you remember when we were in that other cave? And we... read that story of a human man that was protecting people like this? Yes, uh, of course I do. Could never forget that story. I think that might have been Roagon. It would make sense. The stories talked about him as a merchant. This guy is only a merchant of death. Well, it's still I mean, merchant. maybe, right? <laughs> um, Reese. Also, stories get, I mean, elves might be honest and stuff, but stories can be exaggerated. True. Would you rather have somebody be a hero right off the bat, or would you rather be like, oh, he's just a merchant. He's a really nice guy. Just going to point out 70 foot relief on the wall. <laughs> There it is. Just well, okay, maybe not, but they, they have good. very they have similarities. Reese will stand up and he holds on to the journal he's got. It's a blue journal. It's his father's journal. He says, "All the stuff about my father is in here, especially when he was a captain in the Republic. This is what you came for." And he thrusts out the journal. Thomas will gently take it and look at Reese and kind of tilt his head and well I mean that completes our mission but where are you going I don't know if you don't wish to stay here I'm certain the captain will at least take you with us and you can make your way from there start fresh so he lo looks around the room and when he turns back to you Kodrog you see the tear spill out of his face and it fell out of his eye just like rolling down his cheek okay well uh, so I'll uh, when it, as he accepts I'll unlash uh, his father's mug from my belt and hand it over I believe uh this will help your transition. So he like, so he'll take it from you and he'll look at it and just like, and then he'll hand it back to you. And he'll like, he'll like put it back, you know, like reach back out to you. And I was never much of a drinker. <laughs> there is, however, something I'm, I think like, that you he'll like. Be like. I'm not much of a drinker. <laughs> What'd you say, Paige? There is something, however, that I think you'll like. It's a little bit large, but I mean, it's something. And, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you when we get there. So he will announce, since this is pretty much, you guys have saved him. Mm -hmm. And he understands that. Yeah. There's there's nothing for him to stay here. Uh, no, no reason for him to stay here. But he also doesn't want to have, like, what he considers the Im uh, things that are important to his father and his mother to be left for bandits to try to, to come take. Um, and so he would like to make arrangements with your captain to basically pack up some of the things that he feels are, are important to keep to travel with him wherever we're going. 
And then, after the what he feels he can take with has been removed, the opening to be blown up or, or destroyed in some way with magic or something so that nobody else can find it. Okay. I'll, uh... Yeah, Thomas, Thomas agrees to this. I mean... And he'll even say, he'll be like, I'll convince Jason to do this. <laughs> if he says no. Convince Jason. And, um, I'll talk to my I'll talk to, my I'll talk to the captain about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, he'll he'll just open up his uh, his wizard tome and he goes, I'll start studying ruins and stuff. <laughs> and, but as they're as they're like heading out, if nothing happens, um, is there like a minimize spell that I could do? For what? The painting. What painting? The painting. Oh, oh the, the the giant the giant one the, of, of Zelagar the, and Rogue. The father and Zelagar. The three, by, the three by four foot one. That one. Is it, I or, thought it was huge. Yeah, it's three foot by four foot. The picture of the two of them, where he once carrying, where he's carrying her away from the burning. Are you village, talking about or the, the no, from, the painting, from last painting, game. Oh, the photorealistic from last one? Game. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's large. It's um, yeah. It's pretty big. So no, and it's an actual painting on wood. So it's not actually like a piece of canvas or tapestry that he cut out. I'll check. I'll check if you can. It's tapestry. Hang on. That was. I just want to know uh, if I can shrink 32. it with magic. If she can shrink it to put well, it into a bag of holding or something. No, I know. I want to shrink it to give it to Reese so he can have something of his mother and father. <laughs> yeah, it's on canvas, so you can cut it out. Yeah. So okay. even if you even if you can't manage the shrinking right now, you can at least take it with you. While you. All right. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut it out, but Thomas will basically show him this and uh, basically say I can attempt on magically permanently shrinking it into perhaps a locket of some sort or a pocket watch if you a what? are that kind of person. <laughs> a what? <laughs> oh, what a pocket it? watch! And I'll, I'll pull mine out and I'll click it open and I'll show him face he it. You know, at it. Tracking. What a strange little thing. What is it for? Uh, I, yeah, it tracks the passage of time. He just stares at you oddly. Huh. Thomas like pats him on the shoulder and goes, I'll teach you about time and months <laughs> and years. <laughs> and, oh, no. But he basically just kind of gestures towards it and he goes, that's if you want it around. Yes. I'll see what I can do once it's on the ship. So you but I think... Make arrangements to... Sorry take out the things that Reese feels are important, and then also, you know, the things that you all feel are important too, you know, like the kegs and the yeah. uh, other... Some of the weapons. Weapons. All of the magical cloaks. Mm. Which, all those gray cloaks were all magical, so there are three mm. magical gray cloaks on that wall, by the way. And next uh, to the, I believe the that beard. Reese is definitely going to be taking one, because... Yeah, it reminds him of someone important. Yep. Zeligar. Mama. Um, so I don't see a reason why we can't uh, kind of fast forward just a smidgen here yeah. and see what happens next. Mm -hmm. Because what's important at this point in time as we come to a close. You have found a written record of Roagans about his time in the Republic. And it's... Uh, the as uh, the the high level overview that Reese gives you before you uh, you know he actually works with you to translate it into dwarvish so it, it can be read by anyone um, you know is that they uh, something happened where his father found out what was going on with uh, you know their treatment of elves and he chose to save um, Zeligar instead of have her, you know in, instead of the fate that awaited her in the Republic and uh, yeah so it's like a you know a fairy tale he kidnapped her but saved her yeah. <laughs> 
and then you know he has a very uh, and different from our point of view he has a very view per, he has the view of that that's my woman that's my possession yeah. mm-hmm. I possess her yeah and through her journal you read oh my god he's doing the whole thing he owns me oh it irritates the hell out of me I love this guy but it irritates me she has yeah, more least- pragmatic you know 21st century view and things like yeah yeah you owe me yeah, whatever sure, okay <laughs> I open. Oh, she's also seven hundred. Like she's probably can, just over that shit. I can so fry adorable. you from the inside, but you're cute. You're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy that she ended up loving him, and it wasn't like oh, I'm kept here by my against my will. <laughs> like, um, but. well, in the Elven part, definitely is up Thomas's alley as far as it goes for reading material at some points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's at least that, and. Uh, that's so awkward. What? That's just awkward to That's get to that journal. part. She's going to no, write about know, that stuff. No, I know, but like, it's just, it's one of those things where Thomas won't think of it. it like, he'll just kind of shrug it off because it's a, it's a diary. Like, yeah. But... For Paige, that's a bit awkward because like her son is standing right there, and you're. But you're not reading it out loud, are you? Roll again tonight. That's when Roll again took me in the room, and we'll stop this part of the story tonight. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Graydon. That's a cliffhanger. Uh, Roagon, one of the things that I think really kind of ends this story, kind of brings light to what's going on, is it talks about his job as a captain. It talks about how he brought pilgrims to places, sometimes at their own doom, or at least what he felt was a terrible place for these people to be. Over the years of being a captain, he even talks about taking people to places like Spindlehaven. And he's like, they do not need to be here. These people are innocent. These people who live in this place, although they are not all humans, and you know that part of the journal is like, well, it's terrible, and you're not a human, Spindlehaven is a bad place and you don't belong there. Yeah. And um, there is a section where he says that he flat out refused to take anyone to like Hanya. At all. <laughs> and so this captain talks about how these people go to an aisle, they become friends. The people who get off the boat show, and he says it is interesting to watch as they show face to those who are around them about how happy and open they are. But when the behind closed doors, they bad talk everyone who isn't a human, who speak about raise, waiting, for the, waiting for the opportunity to help cleanse all these sinners. So he definitely shows that there's a side to these people, yeah. that their religion, and, and at some point it's after transporting Elves, or at least one or two elves, that he has a chance to come to the realization that it's not all the way that he's been raised. He was he was raised on the outskirts of some of the more devout areas, and so he didn't get a very harsh upbringing like some of the priests might have, and how they pushed their religion. Yeah. And so, at the point where he met her, he chose her over his entire way of life. There's at least a month worth of, maybe two or three months worth of time where he didn't write in his journal, like, I don't have time. He comes back and goes, I'll write later. <laughs> oh my God, shit's happening. <laughs> I am on the run. Man, this is weird. You know, kind of scenarios. <laughs> so, you have documented evidence of Roagon. And it can be confirmed, you know, like, it's, you know, how people nowadays, they can do like, you know, oh, yes, this was written with 17th century ink, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's magical things that can do that. There's probably also from the king's physician could work up something, too, as well, in case you needed to have proof of its authenticity. And push comes to shove, you could always have one of those individuals who can read the language come by and read it out to him from the actual book instead of translating it from dwar- into Dwarvish. The only problem I have with that is which... Uh, I mean, Thomas is going to bring this up when we get into like a meeting with the captain or whatever about giving this book away or whatever. I- I'm for sure we're going to make copies. Just either 
for Reese or for the king himself or whatever. But the problem is we have to hide Reese's identity. If that book itself has Reese's name in it, we can't say that out loud. We can't have Reese. We, Reese would have to be renamed something because of the fact that these books are very detailed with elf, elvins and Saven and yep. I'm and marrying Zeligar and, and Zeligar is having my baby and yeah. 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 You do notice that Reese does not have pointed ears. And his skin is dark like any other humans, you know, but so but that his, doesn't... Yeah, his hair is, uh, is like, it's not blonde, it's like a, it's like a deep auburn, very curly. Yeah. It's still, still. Tight, tight curls, I believe is what Tight curls, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if we do have Reese, we could have him be a old friend of Roagon's or something. <laughs> I don't know. If that's if we wanted him to speak and there is prove that he was there. Ragnar. Yeah, remember Ragnar in town? Yeah. Perhaps he might be able to assist you. Because he can actually say, yeah, I, I worked with him. This is his journal. Mm -hmm. Does he recognize Reese? Like, I'm sure, like... Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I think, I think Ragnar, Ragnar would go with them and be mm -hmm. like, look, this guy needs a steward. This yeah. kid... Well, it's, not just that. It's it's someone that he actually like. Reese actually knows him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like I would want Reese to be with somebody that he actually remembers and knows, and not just some random wizard and dwarf and other two people that are you know Aww. weird and eccentric. That's nice. Excellent. Good idea. So you found what you're looking for. Yep. You will find out. After your long months travel back to Narok, if it was worth it. Mm. Next year. In oh, 2020. Dun, dun, dun. Technically, that is a month away, so mm -hmm. it's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll skip over the boring travel in real time. <laughs> so you guys have to deal with that boring travel in real time. <laughs> yeah, there's no fast forward for y'all. Yes. Just the story. So? What'd y'all think? Yeah. This is wrap-up part. I thought I had a great time exploring yeah, the Shadow Isles. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to come back and, and play again. Good. Cool. We are considering adding in a third player. Ooh. Announcement to everyone watching. Player three should be entering the arena next year. If you have any interest in joining us in the Shattered Isles, you can send us a message through original box set. 